uh, all of you expressed an interest in AI, would humanity be held hostage to that singularity moment, to machines that can think better than human beings can? And I don't see anyone probably more appropriate to, to explore this topic than Dr. Shu. She has a uh, background in physics, uh, a couple of masters in atmospheric science, uh, as well as masters in computer science, a PhD, and then went to business school. How could you do all? <laughs> in any case, she uh, she has a very broad vision of us going through the outline, and it's about combining um, the ideas of AI, Internet of Things, blockchain technology, and then their applications to few select industries. You know, financial industry, education, retail, sales and marketing, food safety. So, you know, I can almost see a queue of financiers lined up. But the good news is she doesn't need the money. She's heading a large group of about $45 billion in revenue. So Dr. Shu, tell us how it's done. Thank you. How's everyone doing? Good afternoon. All righty. Uh, I'm. Uh, my name is uh, Elizabeth Shi. I came to the state uh, in 1990 with a 45 bucks, and I just felt like 45 is a good number for me because now I'm head of a 45 billion dollar company's technology. I'm the chief te uh, technology officer for CP Group, which is an international conglomerate, consists of uh, more than 200 different companies vary from seed, uh, feed, pork, eggs, and um, pharmaceutical, telecom, you name it, retail. So we own 10,000 seven levels in Thailand. So it's quite interesting that uh, how I, I went through that. I'll just give you a quick flash of uh, what I did. I went to Beijing University and uh, Came here with 45 bucks here, and then got my master and another PhD. Worked for IBM, at DB2 and content management. I was the first group member of the first version of a content management. Right now, generates more than a billion dollar revenue for uh, IBM. And then I went to Vitra. We were the EAI company doing integration, you know, basically putting all the applications together. And I went to Stanford and taught classes at the Stanford. Yeah, I was uh, joking that I, I didn't go to Stanford, but I taught classes at the Stanford. I taught my own class. I wrote a textbook for my class. It's about the leadership. It's at Amazon. It's called the Penn State for Successful Career. Fortunately, we got over 100 five stars. And I feel so fortunate because my students were very kind to me. So I, I went to uh, you know, quite a bit of uh, challenges, and uh, in my whole career, it's always the women, the only women in the room with brilliant guys. And those guys were pretty nice with me after a few exchanges, so which is pretty nice. We can use our technology in an evil, very evil way, or we can use the technology to improve the food safety, to really make sure that we use our resources properly. Very wisely. Well, I want to start with this picture. I want to point out the fourth industrial revolution is here, and there consists of so many new technology. And people talk about AI, but the things that is more than just AI. And I like to talk about the few enablers: is mobile, is IoT. The world is going to be filled with trillions of IoT devices, and you will find out. Anytime you move, you, you, you do anything, you are under some kind of a civilian. And uh, you're no longer uh, a person. You have your digital attribute as a person. You have your digital twins next to you. And then those enablers will change the world dramatically. I wanted to combine three different technologies, uh, or four technologies together, mobile, you, know, you all know about mobile, artificial intelligence, and uh, blockchain technology, as well as uh, IoT. Why is this important? Because 
the uh, IoT is really your five cents plus your nerve system. And I would say that your, I, your AI is your brain. And you, you marry the AI with the IoT, you basically have the brain, central nervous system, and then your five cents. And then your mobile is the way that you reach out to others and other people reach out to you. And with the blockchain, the blockchain and plus the IoT sensors, machine gain the digital identity. And the machine can not only just uh, think and sense and speak and move, they can do a lot of things for you. And they can do a lot of things with you. So in our lifetime, I would say in the next five years, we'll see that machine and machine are negotiating business with each other. I have seen that already in Southeast Asia and in China. And machine and people are doing uh, business together. I'll give you an example that a company that is doing the vending machine. Basically, you walk by them and say, hi, uh, it can recognize your face. And they know about you, they will say, okay, I think the next quarter part is, hi, this is how are you? You look good. And, or you look very happy. And then the machine remembers the last setting of a coffee. That was a coffee machine. Last coffee setting, how much cream, what's the temperature, etc." For me, say, do you want to have your mask, the same coffee as the last time you ordered? And then, you know, you can think about it. The next move could be, do you want to bring a coffee to your husband? And then you want to try a different latte. Like, hey. So this is an example like machine by combining AI, IoT, and uh, mobile, etc you are able to do business with a machine. A machine is able to do business with you. And then in the future, if you look at the whole supply chain, machine and the machines are doing business at this point by human's pres prescription. But in the future, machine will add acting as an individual. They're going to do business with the other machine. They're going to negotiate the price. The world is going to be integrated and automated intelligently. Not just, okay, I have, the, I have the integration, I have the automation, it's going to run like this all the time. No, it's going to be running differently every single time. It's going to change dynamically. That's the world is going to be. So the fourth, uh, you know, Industrial revolution is not about the digitization, digitize your paper into digital format, not at all. It is about creating your digital twin next to you. It's about enable the machine, enable the machine to do business with the machine and with the people. So there are so many applications, and I list a few. And if you look at the, all this technology, that's used one thing that people in the developing country are worried the most. It's the food safety. And they don't know what kind of food is in the sausage, right? They don't know what kind of a, uh, you know, antibiotics this chicken consumed before they, it was slaughtered. So they really want to understand that. So, we as a group, as a city group, we're developing a food safety app. And basically, you just scan the QR code, you can tell where the, the chicken was hatched, what kind of uh, animal feed that chicken was it had, how many hours uh, lighting they had, did, they, did the chicken walk around in the yard, or did the chicken just stay in the little, uh, little queue? So, so that's one thing that we're looking at. That's a combination of uh, AI and also IoT sensor and blockchain technology. And people ask you, why blockchain? You keep talking about blockchain. The last group of people talk about that blockchain enabled the digital currency. If you look at the blockchain, I had a patent in, in this type of technology back in the 1990 when I was at IBM. We developed something called uh, Crypto. What's the meaning of crypto? 
encrypt the envelope. What does that mean? Uh, you have a content, you have a content key, and you encrypt your content with this content key. And then you use the recipient's public key to, in, to uh, encrypt it. The, in, the recipient, the only the recipient who has the privacy key can unlock it for a certain period of time to view it in the editor or the viewer that the IBM provided. So this is why, remember, if you talk about blockchain technology, and then think about you have a public key, you have your private key. That is your identity of your digital twin. And that is the identity of any machine. So one opens, one locks. Another thing is one sign the signature, your private key, you use that to sign your signature. And your pop key is for people to validate. That is indeed from your uh, source. So, and then also blockchain technology is very important because, let's see, just use this con conference. We can use blockchain to do the registration. You did a, you found this e information, you registered, and you got confirmation. This is a set of a transaction. That sex transaction is one block. And the next thing is, you, say, you know what, I wanted to, to look at the schedule and then to mark down which one I wanted to listen. And then you go there, and then some other people go there, and then you have your own blocks. So anything, anything has a sequential events can be modified, uh, can be recorded that using blockchain technology. So this blockchain technology is very useful for medical, a medical record, food safety, and of course financial services and uh, you know, uh, logistics and the supply chain. The most important thing is the smart contract. That in the future the contract is going to be coded either in a dynamic way that uh, we can negotiate on the fly or in a set way. Once the transaction is finished, the money is going to be deposit or a fine is going to be withdrawn from the person that we didn't do the right choice. So, uh, so I would say that uh, if you look at this, those are the typical things that we as a group were looking at. Medical record, blockchain, and also uh, quite a bit of a digital currency because uh, we have 10,000 retail stores plus hundreds of uh, Costco equipment just in our retail uh, area, that we really need to look at the food safety and also to use blockchain technology to uh, record all the transaction and the supply chain. So this is what uh, I, uh, I talked about early on. The world is going to be an intelligent automation based on the trust. What is the fundamental of the trust? Remember the pair of the key? And your smart contract, those are the trust. If you have the key in the uh, sign it or encrypt it, that means that content is or that action is indeed from you. And then if you execute the smart contract, you will gain your reputation or you will gain your uh, I would say trust. So in the in the future, in the world of machine. Doing business is based on the trust. Trusting your digital identity, trusting the ability for you to execute your smart contract, just like people. We do business by trust. It's not only I like people like me, but we, we have done some business, we have good record, and we already deliver what we promised to, that's the trust. So the machine and the people in the future, the world is like that. It's doing business automatically based on the trust. The trust is a little bit different this time. It is the trust between all the digital signatures of digital, either a person, your digital twin, or the machine. So now, in the future, we are just a part of this digital world as a very unique or very specific digital person or identity. So, so for the, our companies and for people's asset, you have to think about, yeah, I want some physical asset, but how much of a digital asset? So CP uh, as a group, 
that we own a lot of digital assets, I mean, physical assets. Our job, as my job as CTO, head of the CTO office, and head of innovation, is to create digital asset for our company. Whether software or adding the digital attribute to the physical asset. For example, egg is an egg, but an egg with a food safety traceability, that egg worth way more than just an egg. Think about it. All of you, think about your business. What kind of a digital asset you can add to your physical asset? Make your product more valuable, more competitive. So, machine is going to, AI is going to change everything. <coughs> I, I really like the, this slide because I felt so, uh, so true that machine frees my hand. When I'm cooking in my kitchen, I was like, Alexa, set my timer for five minutes. So I'm so reliant on Alexa. Without Alexa, I'm going to burn my food. <laughs> Seriously. And then free your body. And uh, when I got my first Tesla, the, C, the CFO of Tesla delivered a Tesla for us. And he gave me a tour. Uh, and then with, along with the 31st, very first customers, it was very, very early. So my Tesla doesn't have a sensor, doesn't have the self-driving uh, capability because we are the very, very first delivery of Tesla. And then he turned off all the lights. He said, we want the same light. The really purpose, he, just, he didn't want us to see the detail of his robots. So literally, in the in Tesla factory, everything's done by robots, right? And then in our uh, CP's egg farm, uh, we have one in uh, north of Beijing. We only employ 26 people, but every day we generate 1 million eggs or Beijing market. Can you believe that? That's a highly automated place. That's that's what machine free your body. You don't have to lift anything. Everything's done automatic. Free your mind. You know the, the, the vending machine will say, "Hi, listen. So do you want to bring a coffee to your husband? Remember your hu your husband like this type of coffee." I don't even have to think about it. The machine will remind remind me. <laughs> if I want to go to let's see, go to Antarctica to have a trip. My machine will plan a thing to tell me trip option one two eight uh, one two uh, one two three. You just choose one. Tell you the cost. Tell you wherever you can go. All the attractions. You don't have to do anything. That's how the machine is going to free your mind. Well, those are the good news. But the bad news, or the good news, is our current jobs. Half of the current job will be replaced in the next 15 to 20 years. And the good news is the new market and new jobs will appear. And I was joking with Tom B from Stanford. He's, he's a professor uh, from, uh, uh, from Stanford EE. And he said, the number one job is going to be, what is it? Uh, repair, robot repair. He was just joking. He said, we need to implement this big of a red button on the back of this uh, robot say, shut up. <laughs> because he said at one point, we probably will need to deliver the people to sh manually shut down all the uh, pervasive and the powerful, overpowering machine. So this is his joke. But on the other side, think about it. Will your job going to be replaced? Will your children's job going to be uh, replaced? What are you going to do for your children you're too young to have children now, but in the future, <laughs> think about it. And you know, what kind of a thing you need to learn continuously? Because I felt like we need to reinvent ourselves, whether it's our career or whether it's our company. And we really need to utilize latest technology. I'm always the number one you know, adopter. I have the first version of my iPhone, first version of my iPad, first version of Model S. Yeah, if I only had one, you know, if I didn't have a kid, I probably would have bought the very, very first version of a Tesla. But I have two kids, so I have to buy the stand. Yeah, and Google Class, etc. So utilize the new technology, try that out as the investment to your career. And build a digital brand and a digital asset. 
think about it, is not only just who you are, go to personal, you know, uh, networking. Like I got this job because someone knocked on my door, LinkedIn doors. Hey, Elizabeth, do you want to work at the CPU in Thailand? I said, oh, LinkedIn message sounds great. So that is the uh, so I got like a perfect uh, profile on LinkedIn. <laughs> and the more important thing is continuous learning. I spend 10 to 15 hours every week learning new things. And whether it's learning new things by reading or learning by doing. I have a studio at home, I have a 3D printer, and uh, I, I would dig trenches, and uh, I would do all sorts of things because I love doing things, not only just doing things intellectually, abstractly, but also doing things in the physical world. So, in summary, reinvent yourself and look at it. Can you create a new job? Can you create a new, a new, a new market? And ask you to invest in your company and be a billionaire. So, it's great, it's my great pleasure talking to you. So, start your transformation now. Utilize it before the machine is powerful, overpowering up. That's use them. Thank you.